In 2002, a man named Makoto Shinkai almost single-handedly took the anime industry by storm. After the release of his first OVA since making this his full-time job, Voices of a Distant Star, Shinkai got a fair amount of fan support coming from Voices, and there was a buzz in the air about not only what will Shinkai, who at this point is already being called the next Miyazaki, make next, or will it successfully follow up his previous works, but will he make it his feature-length debut. All of those questions were answered in May of 2004 when Shinkai released a pair of wallpapers showcasing what he's coming out with next. What followed was the release of a film that explored the distance between a boy and a girl, but instead of being separated through time and space, it's through dreams and reality, and they're laid out in a story that'll sure to stay with you on an emotional level. It's about to get spiritual here in the latest edition of The Makoto Shinkai Project. Episode 3, The Place Promised in Our Early Days. The story takes place in an alternate post-war period where Japan is divided. Hokkaido is ruled by the Union, while Honshu and other southern islands are under the authority of the United States. In the summer of 1996, three middle school students, Hiroki Fujisawa, Takuya Shirakawa, and Sayuri Sawatari, make a promise that they'll cross the border with a self-constructed plane called the Bella Ciela and unravel the secret of a tall tower that was built on Hokkaido, but their project was abandoned after Sayuri becomes mysteriously ill and is transferred to Tokyo. Three years later, on the brink of another war in 1999, Hiroki finds out that Sayuri has been in a coma since he last saw her, and it's connected to the tower they longed to fly to years ago, and he asks Takuya to help him find a way to wake her up. Even though Shinkai has an entire crew to work with, unlike the last project he worked on, he still prefers to be a huge presence behind the scenes. Not only was he the creator, director, writer, and producer, he also worked on the art for the film, was the sound director, director of photography, the editor, was one of 11 people who worked on the background art, he worked and designed the model for the damn plane, wrote the lyrics for the ending, and worked on the CG for the film in addition to a few roles making the DVD booklet for the movie. In total, he appears in the credit at least 17 times. It's because of this amount of dedication he is already being called the next Hayao Miyazaki, albeit a I'm pretty sure Miyazaki never wanted to dabble in computer graphics, but it's in the way they both have heavy oversight into what they're working on at the moment and how amazing the results turn out when it's all done and with places promised in our early days or the place promised in our early days, this is no exception. Looking at this film just after looking over Voices of a Distant Star, I can safely say animation-wise, this is a more improved version. Not everything is an improvement, but it's enough to say that Shinkai and Comics Wave films are steadily progressing at this point to where they are now, making stuff like Your Name and Weathering With You. The biggest uptick in quality is the amount of CG, and Shinkai takes advantage of it. There are some scenes where we don't know what the characters are saying, either because of how the shot is angled or how, it, how the certain scene is shot or through them just not being heard. You can see them talking, but you can't hear anything. Shinkai does this to give the illustrious backgrounds and colors time to speak when the characters don't. Almost like Shinkai is turning on a switch that makes you pay attention to the backgrounds and turns it off to the characters basically when he wants to. It's a way to make you immerse in the world that he created. One quick Google image search of the title of this film, and for the most part, you'll see nothing but backdrops. I don't know about you, but if your breath is taken away just by looking at fucking screen caps, you got something special here. He also implemented the use of lighting just like in Voices, only its use is more effective tenfold due to it being carried out in a feature film, unlike in a near half hour OVA. Another aspect that's similar to Voices is the music, which was once again done by Tenmon. The background music sets the scene pretty well with a mix of string and piano pieces, including a couple of violin-oriented tracks, which is a huge part of the film, and the ending theme is magnificent. Continuing the trend of Shinkai-isms is the story. After what we've seen from him now, and maybe soon, Shinkai is a master at expressing distance, and he displays this by giving it more screen time than the action did. 
The tone is shifted from a somewhat amicable slice of life to a dramatic science fiction story, depending on whose story the movie is following, which leads to what I really like and what I really don't like about this film. What I really like was the concept. The fact that Sayuri is in the physical world but is trapped spiritually in another is fascinating. Combine that with the very natural feel the characters bring, you feel for Hiroki as he tries to find Sayuri knowing that she is very close yet at the same time very far away from him. In this case, instead of communicating via a flip phone, it's through parallel universes. The only problems I saw with this film was towards the end when it's revealed why the Union wants Sayuri and how she was connected to the tower. To me, after seeing all this beautiful imagery and stellar development, the tone felt out of place. It's through this observation where I realized that places promised in our early days really laid down the groundwork for what Shinkai can do going forward. In addition to a couple of plot holes that are seen over the course of the film, it's become evident that science fiction isn't Shinkai's bread and butter, it isn't his strong suit, but writing a more grounded piece of work about how two characters are connected and what distance them between each other are. In some cases, there are moments and places that are very similar to certain moments in his future films, like one scene where I swear to god that's where he got the idea for the half-light in your name. Yeah, the clip is being shown right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is a crucial stance going into his future works. Apart from Children Who Chase Lost Voices, to which I have a few choice words for, but we'll save that for another day, Shinkai has made films about characters going through a dilemma or going through a string of emotions that the majority of people can easily latch onto, the audience most of the time can easily relate to, and we got to see the first glimpse of that in a feature film. Overall, Places is basically a full-length version of Voices of a Distant Star, where Shinkai had more time to really play around on what he's good at writing, while keeping his name in the conversation as one of the next big rising animators. And with that, I'm giving the place promise in our early days an 8 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching the latest edition of this project. If you like the film, if you like this video, hit the like button down below. If you want to see any more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button either on the screen or right next to the channel. <laughs> Also, if you want to see any videos uh, that I have made in the past, there are a huge gallery of them in my channel, obviously, as well as a few on the screen. And with that, my name is Payne. See you guys in the next video.